coming up. Magnets. <laughs> And welcome back. This is part two of episode six, featuring the magnet apparatus. You're tuning in to the Glass Science Show with Matt J. I'm going to demonstrate a technique here, traditional to Murano, called pulling points. I'm heating up a large band of glass here. I'm going to pull it out into a thinner diameter tubing which will then be used as the blow tube or the handle. Just putting a nice even heat into that band there. And then I'm going to keep rotating as I pull out. This will make sure that the blow tube stays centered. And this is one of the techniques that they say you should really practice uh, a lot when you get started. And honestly, I haven't really done it at all. And it turned out pretty well here. I think that's just because I do a lot of other stuff that incorporates uh, the same principles. And I've watched a lot of other glass blowers do that, so I have a good uh, knowledge of it too, but just I don't have the muscle memory. So it, it is something I am definitely going to be practicing here because working on this larger and thicker tubing, I found it's much more difficult to attach the uh, blow tube in the scientific method. And it seems much easier just to pull a point for these large tubes. And now the second point, as you can see, is quite off center, especially in the left hand. I wasn't rotating as I should have. But that's okay, I don't really need a handle here on this other end right now. But then to fix that blow tube to make sure it's on access with the other tubing, you just heat up the shoulder where it connects and rotate it, and that'll help you get it straight. And now this tubing is going to fit into the large vessel made in part one of this episode. I'm going to shrink it up a little bit and flare the edge before I fit it in. And here's where you can see I'll be putting it into the vessel. And as I said before, it's important to keep everything centered and aligned right, uh, especially the blow tubes and punties. When you go to implode a marble and the punties off center a bit, you'll end up with a really wonky implosion. Here I'm going to be tearing this tube in half. And this is one method of doing it. Uh, it's very similar to the pulled point where I'm going to heat up a large band and start to pull, but instead I'll blow at the same time. And this will ensure that the walls will not shrink, but expand. And this makes it incredibly thin, very easy to pop a hole and then to just take the flame in there and melt that, that edge all the way around. With as thin as those walls are, they become much more uh, conductive and they reach their melting point almost instantly when you put the flame against it. And this other end is pretty fragile. I'm going to make sure not to bust it apart. I'll just set it down for now and melt it down later. And now with that done, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up this edge and begin to ream it out. And then that folded over lip will rest on the outside of the vessel and I'll melt it in after I put the tube inside. I'm going to have to open this hole up a little bit more to fit that tube inside. Now I don't have any longer tools, so I'll just have to use this graphite rod. And I know there's a lot to learn in glass blowing. It can seem a little bit confusing or a little bit overwhelming at first, but if you keep at it and just be persistent, you'll understand within time. Like I'm a big fan of science, big fan of physics, and I read into a lot of theories and a lot of laws. And sometimes, you know, I don't understand it the first time and I'll just wait maybe weeks, even months, and then just come back to it. And then the next time I read it, I kind of understand more, or even maybe I need to read it again later to really fully pick it up. And then right here, I'm just kind of heating up the end and then kind of flicking it to round it out, pull it out a little bit. It's a bit like blowing into uh, the vessel. 
Now I went ahead and placed that smaller tube inside the larger one and the lip on it is holding it up from falling inside. And now I'm just gonna heat up a small little area to hold it in place and then go in with a very hot flame and melt that entire lip in. Now back to the science, uh, like one thing that I find that helps for me is trying to find something relative to what I'm learning and kind of learn that too. And it kind of leads you down like a path of more connected knowledge, I guess. Uh, let me give you an example here. You might start at uh, chemistry, you might start at water, how the hydrogen uh, bonds with the oxygen to form water. And then that will lead you uh, into atomic physics if you start looking at you know, the hydrogen atom and then which you might look into something that contains a lot of hydrogen or goes through a process of it, which would be stars. That's a little more astrophysics, but it's also a nuclear physics. And from there, just kind of learn generally about the, the sun. You know, you're not really at chemistry anymore, uh, but then you how the sun affects the earth, how it you know creates a solar system, and then you know how it even creates weather patterns. And then those weather patterns lead to clouds, you know, clouds lead to rain, and then we're back to water. And that's probably one of the more crazy examples I can give. I don't actually branch that many different fields, but sometimes I do like to bounce around a little bit. And real quick, that hole right there you see I opened up, which was about like 15 seconds ago. I didn't actually pop that hole out like you've seen quite a few times. What I did was I puffed out the walls until they were really, really thin. And I took a rod and I just picked it out. And that's just another way to open up a hole. It can be good for avoiding that bubble trash, you know, that glass debris that floats around, gets in your lungs, makes your lungs look like a Christmas tree. And the finishing step here will be just to heat up the bottom and flatten it out so it doesn't roll around and break. And now it's time to run the test. So I was trying to get some iron shavings for the magnet and it turned out to be iron powder. I'm trying to be real careful not to inhale or spill and fail. So I guess I'll just have to do it the hard way then. So I kind of thought to myself, uh, the iron should be attracted to the magnet and vice versa, the magnet attracted to the iron, which means if I dropped it in there without actually tying it to something, it should get stuck. So I have some tape around it to slowly lower it down. And there you go. It uh, creates a magnetic field all the way down to the bottom there and starts to pick it up. And you can kind of see the iron uh, begin to form to that magnetic field as it gets stuck to the vessel there in a three-dimensional shape too. And I think the coolest thing is how it becomes so spiky here as you see it come up and bind together in that field. On the bottom begin to move and kind of form to that shape as the magnet begins to drop down towards it. You can also see here small little pieces flying up, but also clumps or already preformed chunks coming up. And then just one more here, a little bit slower. Uh, that way you can get a little bit more of that information, see what's happening. And just to note here, you kind of see how it's attracting on the left corner. Um, I tried to level off the iron every time when I was dropping the magnet in and it would do that every single time. It seemed like the force or that field was coming off almost on that left side and then coming around. It's very, very interesting. And that's gonna do it for episode six of the magnet video. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you're informed about the new experiments and things being made here on the channel. And as always, have a great day.